Okay there guys, hello and welcome to what I think is probably one of the most important parts of any trading course really, is the part about risk. Now in the very beginning, in the first lesson, we said that there are like four secrets to trading success and number one is trading psychology and number two is risk management or risk and trade management and then number three is what we've been focusing on all the time mostly is the technical analysis and a very little bit of fundamental analysis that is number three on the list of importance and then number four is the part that the final or the first group are doing at the moment which is quantitative uh, analysis where they are measuring the performance of each and every sort of a setup that they have and trying to filter out what it is that they will use in the future and what they are going to you know leave or deciding what times of the day they're going to trade and what time of the day a certain setup seems to be working better filtering out um, currency pairs um, that is all quantitative analysis. But the risk management, which is the second on my list, is so closely related to psychology. It's like, um, you know, you can't really separate the two. Because when we talk about risk, the, the reasons we risk too much is always going to be a most of the time a psychological issue. Yeah. You're risking too much perhaps because you, you feel you've been in the game for too long now and you need to start risking so that you can make a lot of money quickly, justifying your time that you've spent um, in front of your charts yeah, to everyone. You have friends, you have neighbors, you have family, justifying to them that your time was actually worth, um, it was worth spending in front of the, the PC. Everyone is telling you, no, it's not worth it. It doesn't work. Trading is this, trading is that. And then, um, you know, this comes to play with in risk management. You then tend to want to risk higher because you need to make that money quick to justify your time. So it's very closely related to, to psychology. But if you don't get the psychology portion right, then it's not going to work out for you the risk management the other part of risk management is everyone has the same figure in mind in the beginning because the internet is flooded with uh, with a certain figure the risk amount that you must um, mustn't ever risk higher than yeah and everyone knows what that amount is i'll get to that later so in this course because it's been covered so such a lot and uh, not a lot of people are saying, there is also a, f uh, a fear of risking too little. Yeah? There's, there's a thing of risking too much and that, uh, you know, everyone is, will talk about that. But there's also the fear of risking too little. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is trying to have a nice balance and trying to find out what is the correct amount to risk. So when you ask a retail trader how much or how important risk is to them, especially if he's beginning, the retail trader won't even consider the risk. It's a non-issue for them. Yeah. They think it's it's a small part of trading and they don't need to even blink an eyelid for this. And then on the contrary, when you ask a pro trader how important risk is, then he will proclaim that it's one of the most, one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. It's very important to them. Retail trading Brokers gives us full autonomy to manage our account and risk as much as we want. And on the other hand, a pro trader, even if he wanted to risk as much as he wanted, he couldn't. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to do this. They have a risk department that manages the funds for them for the day or for the week or for the month when that risk tolerance has been reached, then it is done. Yeah, it, it's capped that way. 
So we need to, as retail traders, try and build this model inside of us. Yeah, we need to try and have this um, constant thought of the of risk. This is why we always try and attach something to what we are risk uh, trading. It's not just the figure at the bottom of your accounts. It's not just a number. Think about something that you feel is worthwhile risking. And when you pull the trigger on the trade, it is that specific thing that is at risk. Yeah, we, we need to try and do this. And this is how psychology also plays a massive role in this. And then when you ask a trader, a retail trader, how much you need to risk or how much he can risk, then it's always a massive figure. Yeah, it's fine to risk a big amount so that he can grow quickly. And then asking the same question about how much you can risk to a pro trader, he would always mention a smaller amount. This is what they've been taught. This is how it should be done. Yeah, This immediate gratification of retail traders could be one of the biggest um, reasons for the downfall of retail traders. The reason why the failure rate is that high. It could be solely because of the risk, not knowing how much to risk <clears throat> or letting a psychological issue affect how much they should risk. The pro trader is going to want to risk smaller because he has been told this. Yeah? Management of the department has put a cap on the amount that they can risk. So what we need to do is we need to try and find this balance between too much and too little. So before we can do this, I am going to suggest to you to trade very low risk. Keep these training wheels on by keeping your risk very low. As if we are not going to, I'm going to tell you my risk management strategy. But before that, first keep the training wheels on. Risk as low as possible. Risk in your, you know, your 0 0.01 until you get to a certain level before you become a pro trader and start risking uh, more. Yeah, but always try and risk more only when you have made some profits in the market. My philosophy is to try and get to 10% while keeping your training wheels on. And then you can utilize that portion and risk that 10% that you've made from the markets. That's my philosophy. So the lowest lot size until you've reached 10% is what I'm going to suggest to you. Because of the randomness in the market, we don't know which one of our trades is going to be the one that hits the 500 or 1,000 pips. Yeah? We always have that chance, but we also have the, the probability of a trade going against us. So keep the risk while you are not at 10% yet. Keep your lot size at the minimum. In this way, you will grow your confidence in your abilities to apply the strategy. Because to reach 10%, you will need to take a number of trades, a lot of trades. Yeah, If we're going to do it the usual way by risking 1% or 2%, it means that in an ideal world, you need 10 trades and then, then you've reached your 10%. But in that case, you're not going to know your true abilities with a strategy. You're not going to know what your drawdown is. Yeah, You need to know when you're on a losing streak, what is that figure? 
Is it four trades in a row, six trades in a row? It's so that when you are trading in and you have three losing trades in a row, you feel that you are not bothered as much because you know within, if you gathered statistics of 100 trades, then you know that within that 100, there were times where you had a, a losing streak of five trades in a row or six losing trades in a row. And then when, when, when you once again get to a losing streak and you are losing three trades in, in a row, it, it doesn't bother you as much because you know what the standard deviation is with regards to how many trades you can lose in a row before you start you know, pulling out your hair. So this is the quantitative management part of it. So to get this right, you need to risk the lowest possible until you've reached 10% of your account. That's a suggestion from me to you. You can test whether you have indeed mastered the craft. So the one size fits all figure, yeah? in the risk management. Most of the time you are going to get courses or books or internet or websites and YouTube saying that between 1% and 2% is what you need to be risking. That is the one size fits all. The issue there is that we are all different. We all have different risk appetites. We all have a completely different um, psychology, a different makeup. So the one size fits all rule cannot apply logically. Yeah, there is no one size fits all rule. So the two percent that or the one percent that they are claiming is the amounts that I think is going to be best if we do away with that. The way I've discovered um, to do it across a, a group of people, yeah, because we are all different, is, <clears throat> is this. Before we get there, let me just talk about Zurich axioms quickly. The, this is the contrarian belief. The, there are some that says you need to risk very low. First, let's get rid of the 2%. 2% is gone, the 1% is gone. So what is the correct figure? Yeah, You're going to get then the guys, like what I'm suggesting to you is uh, previously was the completely low risk 0 0.01. Yeah, But that is just your training wheels up until you get to your 10%. After the 10%, then what do you do? Is it 1%? Is it 2%? Or what is the balance? Then we get the other spectrum, which is the Zurich axioms belief. Risk management or year in Switzerland, the bankers here in Switzerland, yeah, they believe in this sort of a risk management. It says that worry is not a sickness, but it's a sign of health. And if you are not worried, then you are not risking enough. So that is now contrary to the to the very low risk traders. Yeah, but we still don't know what the amount is. So there are two schools of thought here. The one is the very low risk and the other one is the higher risk where they say that if you are not worried about your amount that you are risking, then you are not risking enough. Then we have the other one that says that if you can't sleep at night, then you are also risking too much. So this whole lesson is trying to get to that figure that we that we all need to feel we are comfortable with. All this is bef this happens after our training wheels has been removed. While our training wheels are on, we are risking the lowest amount possible and this is just to gather as much trades as possible on our um, books for statistics so this is my suggestion to how much you should trade so during your day you, whatever you spend and whatever you spend it on like every day 
every day if you have a cup of coffee at home, you are not going to, you're not really spending much on the coffee. But then you get the guys that are spending money on coffee and burgers or whatever it is, drinks throughout the day. Some guys coming home for lunch. Some guys are bringing sandwiches to work to save. So whatever it is you generally spend in your day, yeah, divide that by three. So if all of this are costing you 90 francs or sorry, $90 or whatever, then you divide that by three and then you can say each of my trade ideas is going to be worth $30 to me. That is a suggestion for me to get the right figure at first. Yeah. So to, to get your figure, not 2%, it's not 0.01%, it's none of that. Try doing, try taking this suggestion. Whatever you're spending during the day, divide that by three and risk that. Then it's not too much and it's not too little that you don't care about anything. It's like you are risking a burger for yourself for the day now. You know, if you start, if you lost the trade, you're risking this burger, you're risking that cup of coffee. Something tangible, something real. It's better than the 2% idea. And it's better than the low, low risk where you don't care about the trade idea. And then your personality also comes into play. So now you found that you've, you, what you are eating and the, your general limit that you have that you normally spend per day that comes into play and you've divided it by three, but now you still have your personality, yeah? And everyone is different. This is going to play a role in, in how much you would want to trade. And do you have a, an aggressive personality or conservative personality? And um, these, I mean, it's going to be influenced by your like your friends and your peers, even what you are eating. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. Yeah. It's a lot to take in to decide what amount is, is a good amount to risk. So once you've de once you've um, decided your personality, whether you are aggressive or conservative, we'll, we'll cover that a little later. Yeah, we also have another thing that is, you know, that decides whether we are or, or, or how much we're going to want to risk. Yeah, and that, that's our emotions. Now, this can't be controlled. Yeah, but it, we can at least manage our emotions. Our emotions, again, is going to be influenced by our, our friends and our colleagues, our diet and our sleep patterns and all of that, yeah. So how do we manage our emotions so that we can risk properly throughout our trading day? So the best way that I've seen happening in the past is that if you have a plan, if you've already planned what your risk amount is per trade, then you can control those emotions. You've already accepted the amount that you are going to risk beforehand. So you can't know what your full amount of your risk is if you keep moving your stop losses to the back. So if your plan is that this is where my stop loss is and my targets are up there, so that is what you've planned. So you need to stick to that plan. So to control your emotions, you're going to need a plan. And plan before you, you trade and also have an entire trading plan so that you, are, you know what to do at each and every step of the way as the trade is moving toward your target or as the trade is moving against you even. You have, you have accepted that risk when you've taken it. You have accepted the burger loss, the pizza or the cold drink. You've accepted that you that is the what you're going to risk.
So how do we do these plans now? Another suggestion is that we need to understand that the zones that we are trading in is not equal. The zones are not equal. If you find that you like resistance levels more, you like the classic beginner strategy entries more than while trades are trending, then your plan should state that you are risking higher at these levels, support and resistance, than you are risking here as prices are going alongside the trend. So how else are zones not made equal? The time frame in which it happens. So we know that this is a fractal in nature, although it looks the same across the board. If I open up a daily chart and I cover up that it's the, from the daily, you wouldn't know whether it's a five minute chart or a daily chart or a monthly chart. Yeah. So it's all fractal in nature. However, with your plan, you need to accept that it works better the levels are has higher value on a higher time frame so in this case taking that rule and applying that we can say that the higher the time frame the more important the zone is which means that you're going to be able to attach a higher risk on this particular zone in that time frame When you get a confluence of events happening in a certain area, more additional value on that zone or area. You have your horizontal trend line going up here. And also you have your 36 period moving average. So that is confluence. So this area now becomes a better zone, which means you can apply your highest risk on this level when you see it prices are respecting a certain ema with no other confluence then risk less so this is how your plan needs to be developed so that when prices comes to the 12 period moving average you have in your plan that i trade 12 period moving averages or you completely leave the 12 period moving average and you're waiting for the 36 period moving average and then when it gets there you know exactly how much you will risk and you will know exactly what is at risk so the emotions that you would have had both missing out on a trade, it, it becomes less. You, if, you, if it hits the 12 period moving average and your plan says no, you wouldn't feel much if, you know, you just go on to the next one. Well, that's my experience. If it's not in my plan, I don't need that one. But it does take time. And this is while the training wheels are on, you will decide. This is why I'm not um, messing around too much with your trading ideas in the group there. You need to decide for yourself what is the level that you want. What do you feel you are the best at? And then you will develop your risk management um, amount or your risk amounts from that. So the higher the time frame and the more confluence there is, the higher you can risk. So if you are an aggressive person, now you guys have been trading for a while now, you probably know if you are aggressive or more conservative. Yeah. So after the training wheels has been removed, even an aggressive trader, I'm going to suggest not to trade 
uh, higher than 0.5% per trade. The reason for this is because I want you guys to just venture into the fun trading part of this. See whether that is something you like. Yeah, where you trade some other uh, people's funds or you are doing one of those prop trading um, services where you need to risk lower and reach certain targets. Yeah, so that's just an idea for you guys to, you know, start aiming toward doing that. So, and the only way to do that is to risk a decent amount yeah and they're starting you off with um, you know maybe more than what you are used to trading so um 0.5 percent would be you know i think they're a nice equilibrium so aggressive traders 0.5 percent even when the trading training wheels are off while the training wheels are on then 0.1 percent yeah your risk percentage 0.1 while this training wheels are on when it's off aggressive trade is 0.5% as your most as your best quality of your trade as the quality goes up the more you can risk as the quality goes down the less you risk 0.25 even the aggressive trader is not going to trade more than that yeah, at least for a while until you're making some money. W risk the amounts that you have made in the markets. That way you will gain some confidence. Conservatively, 0.2% on a good trade and 0.1% on a lower quality trade. This way you will gather enough statistics and you will filter out what it is that works for you and what doesn't work for you. Do you have any questions on that before I move forward? <clears throat> You agree with me, Andy, I see that um, too low that you don't care. Yeah, I know that that one I struggled with for a long while because justifying my time and becoming scared, you see how your emotions and psychology plays a role here with the amount that we want to risk. It's very difficult the, to, to break the two um, apart. Well, psychology and, and risk, they... It's, it's a direct correlation between the two. Um, if the psychology is not um, healthy, then it's definitely going to affect risk in a major way. Um, so uh, I do agree with you 100% when you talk about the personality of uh, an individual and the trader itself. And also friends and family is a huge, it's a huge deal by trying to prove something to them. Um, it will cause you to, um, you know, take bigger risks. So it's it's definitely a direct correlation there. So yes, I agree. And Andy also says, how many trades can we open at zero point one? This is all part of your planning, Andy. Yeah, I'm suggesting that you don't have more than 1% of risk open at the table or at any given moment. So it's as if you can have 10 trades open with a 0.1%. Yeah, that's a suggestion. But you need to, the, these things are, are things that is going to have to be experienced. No, no, your drawdown, we don't want you to even come close to that drawdown, Andy. We want you to stay far away from it. You know, B, he has um, a number of trades um, like open and all he does most of the day, most of the time is wait 
for for um for it to move you know towards his um targets and hitting four percent all the time so not looking and looking and looking if you see you have a trade worth hundreds of pips that's in the market and it's running toward your goal and it's trending you know you don't even need to bother opening another one just let that just let that one run but that's all here in the beginning at, at the beginning stages yeah while that training wheels is on it's a different game you are you are just trying to um see whether you are able to um to reach the goals with a lot of trades so that you can have that statistics if you have if you're doing the 0 0.1 i don't know what justin's um amounts and things are at the moment but i think he's on a number of occasions reached his goal like maybe twice i think um yeah i think i think he did it twice already yeah so um yeah everyone has a different um yeah while your trading wheels are on um andy that, that is okay 0 0.1 percent risk per trade but remember that if you um, um if you're taking um um you're risking that 10 right that 10 dollars but it might be the trade that runs all the way and hits a, a massive target which means you are risking 0 0.1 but you are getting you know you you, you your, your goal is is um, getting a half a percent with that 0 0.1 yeah so this is all got to do with the planning once yeah. we once we um are done with this then the homework is actually you writing up a trading plan and then we will go over it together and this is why i've asked um justin and everyone who's done the course entirely to present their plans for ideas yeah so that the the other groups can utilize that ideas and see if they can implement that plan yeah but for you at the beginning the 0 0.1 have as many trades as you want open because you are not really risking um, anything really it's just your your demo account for now it's proving to yourself whether you can do this yeah so let me see the the other thing with one, the risk one, sorry one, yeah. one second um sorry sorry russ i i, I think even with the demo account well not i think i know um psychology is a very funny thing i, I think even with the demo account treat it as if it is your real account um don't don't take advantage of the demo account and say well it's just a demo account it's not my money I'm just going to to do whatever. Treat it as if it is exactly your trading account because um, again, psychology is very tricky. How you do one thing is how you do most things, if not everything, right? So you wanna train yourself to be disciplined with the demo account because eventually um, you will create shortcuts in your mind and you will kind of do the same thing when it comes to your um, real account when you open one. So. Um, I will I will take your demo account and use your real you use your plan there as well as if it is your real account and treat it as such. Um trust me, it it, it does affect you when it comes time to open a real account. Yeah, that's right. Um right, let me see here. The famous drawing is going to be this one. This is just everything. okay so we have our support levels here and we have our resistance levels up here and then there's a trend going all the way up or down depending on the quality of this you found it on the daily chart i don't know if you can see the yellow maybe i need to change the color 
I'll do it in that color. So depending on <clears throat> the quality of the level, whether it's qualified and on which time frame you found the level, then you will attach a risk value to this. Yeah. So if you have this year as your target on top, and you are trading all the way up here, don't trade this. If this is a hundred pips from where we are, yeah. Yeah. Only trade if you can justify a 50 pip stop loss. Even if you're going to take profits or something at the midpoint. Your, your, your target, your longer term goal should be double the amount of your risk portion. Yeah, not stop loss, I mean your risk portion. So if you are risking 50 pips here, then make sure that you at least have 100 pips as your target up there. This makes that trade worth taking or not. So only take trades that, are, that is worth it. There is enough room to go. Right? Now, that's your initial trade here. Yeah? So as prices are now trending toward your levels, the same rule applies. If you are taking a trade here and you have some EMAs running across here, yeah, you're going to take, you're going to put your stop losses here and your risk is up here. Yeah, so, so this becomes now your risk portion. That's my whole risk. So if this year is 30, do not trade this trade idea if that target is not 60 pips away. it becomes less and less worthwhile. So which means, you guys know, know the strategy now, so which means that this would be prices coming down here, and you're trading a trend line break sort of a situation there. So the first opportunity there would always be your best one, because the trade is going to be worth your while. It's worth risking one burger to get two. Yeah, but as the trade is going up, as the prices are moving up towards the level, it becomes less and less worth it. In this case here, this one here is going to be less worth it. If that now is a 20 pip move there, and you're going to need to put your stop loss below here, and that whole thing becomes 40 pips now, then risking a whole burger just to get to that target becomes less worthwhile. No room to move to this target. Right? Less and less worthwhile. So the beginner classic chart entry comes in here at your level. Notice this on the daily. Created a setup. Then here is what you can risk your 0 0.50. Um, you know, this is after your training wheels are off. Yeah? And then as this is moving up, there is different schools of thought on how to manage this. Yeah. It's either you have taken three trades here or two trades here. This is what needs to be um, in your plan. Taking three trades or two trades or taking one trade and then 
taking off profit off the table or you're risking 0.1% all the time and then adding another 0.1 there, another 0.1 there, and another 0.1 there. Or going less and less and adding less and less value. You're taking 0.5 as your initial trade, and you're taking 0.3 on the next one, and 0.2 on the, and the final one. And then you decide that, nope, I am done. I don't take any more trades. It's been my first trade year, my first trade after the break, and I take the second trade after the break. But after that, I don't bother. I, I manage, I only manage the trades all the way up to this point now. Yeah. And another school of thought is if you've taken a trade here, you manage the trade, meaning you're putting your stop losses below the previous stop hunt. So very, very aggressively you are trailing the the, the 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 trade all the way up remember trend trading is not the same as like scalping the idea yeah trend trading is a different story you need to be able to cope with managing the trade as it pulls back and the a lot of people cope by entering three trades let me just um delete this So you have your barriers here again. So you've taken one trade or you, you, your first idea and your target is up there. So now you can divide that trade into, um, into three, meaning taking three positions. Yeah. And then taking one position off the table. So that is one third of your position. You can take off at this level here. Yeah. Then when it hits to two is to one here, then you take off two thirds of your, of your position. You take another third off here. And then the third one, you let it run forever as far as it can go. These are all different um, schools of thought and it, you're going to have to plan this yourself. You're going to have to see which one works for you. I've been chopping and changing around from three positions to two positions as my initial one. I've been chopping and changing one year, six months or even three months at a time depending on the way the market is moving. How many times am I getting one third out of the table? Yeah, I've been playing around with taking um, one third and then moving my stop loss to break even, which means I've got my one third in the bank and if prices come to hitting down, I've at least I've made one third. But these are things that you're going to have to plan and this is probably going to be um, a, a difficult process. And that's the reason I'm giving the last, uh, or the, sorry, the first group of guys, the time that's necessary to come up with, the, with their own plan on what they're going to do with managing. The thing, the, what we know now is that we, when we hit a, a level, we know this is where we want to enter. Yeah, we know that. And we know we want to try and get into the market again as prices are trending. Yeah, But the difficult part of this is to already know that how much you're going to risk here. And if you are going to move prices to break even. No, we, we need to try and get out of the mindset where we need to look at the forums to, to let us know what did you do with your trade? For now, that is all fine. What did you do with your trade? That's great. Um, because you are still learning and you want to find out what is, what's working for you. So all the ideas that are flowing. So this is why I want the homework um, to be done, discussed, and then 
putting your trading plan in the trading plan section. Everybody needs to have access to this because we never know the personalities are, might be might be the same. Yeah, uh, I'm telling you that this this risk portion is everything. Yeah, it's it, it's everything. This year, knowing what that you want to take a trade is becoming easier now. But how much to risk, how to manage it is important. Yeah. Let me just show you what I do. So that's number one. And my stop stays there until that's broken. Adding positions on the first pullback. Yeah, adding positions there. And then my stop is now here for this trade. Yeah, and then as it's going up, nothing happens until that is broken and closed. Yeah, continuing this way. Other times I'm taking three positions and then closing them here. And other times I'm taking one position and adding positions there as it pulls back. I'm not taking it and all the time only taking it with it when it's worthwhile taking, when we have enough room to get to there. This is the reason I like the pullbacks to the 36 instead, because it gives me that the risk portion and my reward portion. So the, whether a trade is worth it, is it's very important. Yeah, very important, especially in the trending, especially when it's trending. All right, do you have any questions on, on this part? So the, the homework is going to be a trading plan that tells me that how much you are going to be risking over here, how many positions you are taking in this area, if it's going to be multiple entry sort of positions. I, th I think a maximum of three entries is, is probably going to be the most manageable. Yeah. And then taking it off at one third and taking off at um, two thirds. Because if you get to two thirds here, that means that whatever you've risked is already completely off the table now. And then the last, lo the last third is just making you money. Yeah. So once you get to two times the risk, two is to one, you've already taken off one third there and the and two thirds here. So all your risk is off the table. And then the other third is what makes you money. This year is nothing. It's this one that makes a profitable trader. Because this is just a whole random affair. Nobody, nobody knows what's going to happen here. Nobody, yeah. It can move up and down and do what it likes. Even here when it gets to your third, but at least by this time, you've already made your risk. Your risk is out of the table here. You are comfortable. You've got three positions in you, you. You went in with three positions. Yeah, you took one third because when it pulls back, you don't want to feel, you know, unhappy. If it, if you took one third there at one is to one and prices pulls back all the way against you, then at least you are only, you only lost 
You didn't lost, lose uh, um, the three of three. You only lost two of three. You lost two thirds of your trade. You've, at least you've got one is to three. Now, all of this sort of thing happening over and over and over again, over hundreds of trades, then it's a profitable system, just the risk itself. I've, I've spoken to people who's, um, who's trading this system as well for longer. They are also using only two trades there. And then taking one is to taking half of the position off the table. Yeah. When it gets to one is to one. And then letting the other half completely run. And nothing stops you from taking off, um, you know, a, a, a big chunk of everything. If you have lot size um, 0. 0.5, five lots running here you've got a half a lot running and here nothing stops you from taking off 0 0.25 here and letting the rest run yeah it depends on what the price action is doing are you able to manage your your trade underneath these stop losses it's always nice to keep your stop loss underneath the previous stop hunt. That's always been the best for me to get to those um, higher values. So it's not about these small trades in, um, um, it's, it's about that last position running that makes you money. The win ratio is not the thing here. Getting a 70% seven, win ratio isn't the thing. Everybody wants that 70% win ratio, but that's not what it's all about. What it's all about is getting this one third position running. When I say one third, I mean that final position on an idea. Your first idea was here and you've ran it to 300 pips to your target here, but it breaks that and you are still in the trade. Imagine having a trade with that, where it breaks your level on top here and your stop loss is there. How comfortable do you feel that that is going forever? And then that is the one there that makes you money. And then trade this or trail this as if you are always adding to the last stop hunt going up. That's the way we manage our trades. And trade management and risk management is what, what's going to make your account grow. Right, so the homework is going to be what is your trading plan, yeah? That is what the homework is all about. We're going to need to know how much it is you're going to risk. And this is, uh, you, it's going to be after your training wheels are off. So assume that there's no training wheels anymore. How much are you going to risk? 0.5% as a total idea from here all the way up to there, which means you're going to add 0.2% um, here. And as it goes up, you're going to add 0 0.2. And then you're going to take your final one at 0 0.1 all the way up to this idea and letting this last one run? Or do you want to take um, the total 0.5% risking this idea and then just removing this off the table all the time as it gets to, to your targets? This is something that you need to plan depending on your risk appetite and your, you know, just the way, um, you, the way you are thinking, yeah, your um, your psychology and and just your your makeup. You guys are trading for longer now, so you probably know how you would want to do this by now, or at least you have some idea of how you want to do this. 
and then we'll talk about the your risk management afterwards and the rest of the group plans should also be in there so that you can have a, a look and see if you like that style or not does it um yeah andy good you you say it makes sense it's good so do you have any questions on on that further guys Yeah, if you if you have this, you see the thing is for me, the trading the idea starts at the bottom. Yeah, it starts. Yeah, when you get to this level, you're already deciding whether this is a trade. And once you've decided that this is a trade, and it's worth the total zero point five, then you're not going to add zero point one, zero point one. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, because then that is one, two, three, four, seven. No? Yeah. Then that, then you are risking too much there. On a trading idea, how much are you risking? While the training wheels are on, you instead you you're going to do the the lowest lot size throughout this. So that you can know whether this is something you're going to want to trade. Yeah. So uh, you can trade your 0 0.1, 0 0.1 all the way. Doesn't matter how many, how much times you trade here. We want to know in your final plan whether you will take these trades in the future or not. You're not going to know that if you don't take them. Yeah. So take, um, um, don't risk 0 0.1. What I mean is 0 0.01 on all of them so you can rule them out later with your training wheels on don't trade a bigger lot size than that yeah but for your final plan is 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 what the homework is all about yeah and this you will be able to develop over time because we're not going anywhere the risk management is the last um formal lesson but we're not going anywhere yeah we're still here we're trading together and this like justin he, he likes to say that it's a work in progress his plan is a work in progress so this could change even for me changing from taking three positions to taking two positions at the trading idea here from the start has been changing you know, as it goes, as time moves on. So if your if your plan is it's not changing, you know, over time as you get um, better at this and clear understanding, um, then you certainly not growing as a trader, right? Your plan should definitely be changing from time to time. A small alteration as you go, because you you would learn uh, little tricks here and there, and you would know based on what Rustam just said, how many trade you have taken. Uh, you will kind of see what work, what doesn't, what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, and then based on those understanding, you should definitely alter your your, your plan little by little to get it to perfection eventually. But again, if if it's not changing at least a little bit over a period of time. It means that you you're not growing. So I don't know any business in the world, whether it's McDonald, or uh, um, oh, or oh, oh, um, Rustum favorite conflicts companies. <laughs> um, they 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 changing things. They 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 figuring out over time based on the process that they have in place. 
they seen what's working, what's not working. And guess what? They start doing a lot more of what's working and a lot less of not of what's not working. So your plan is no different because you at this point it's is running a small business and you should treat it as such. Uh, nothing less, no exception whatsoever. All right. So if you guys have questions, trust me, uh, Rustam and I are both here to help you as much as we can and as long as we need to, to get you where you need to be. Um, but remember, you, you, you have to do the work. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So well, I'm starting to wait. I'm starting to wake up a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, for me, if you didn't trade this way with a 0 0.01 all the time, then you are not going to easily eliminate certain things here. Yeah. So if you find that you don't like adding positions on the 12 period moving average, then you can change that later on and say, I, I only add positions when it hits, when it pulls back further down to the 36 and it needs confluence of a proper trend line before I start looking for another entry. But to, to know this is going to mean that you're going to need to do this. And this is the, the part that you guys are at at the moment. Yeah, it's finding out, it's the quantitative management part. It's finding out whether, which of the portions you like or which you don't. But I'm sure you know now that trading at, min, at zones after a manipulation of whatever, whatever shape it comes in is the highest probability that it's going to work out. Yeah. So attach a risk value to all of these. And then later on, you will know exactly what is what it's worthwhile for for you. Yeah, is it worthwhile for you taking um, that particular trade? If you're finding these zones on the four hourly, then just drop the risk. Yeah, if this is um, four hourly, then drop the risk. Whatever you feel comfortable with, you know what the setups are now, and they're all the same. Nowhere else are you probably going to find a, um, any different setups. Yeah, it's just when when we're pulling the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So attach a risk to to your identified setup. Is confused. Um... So no, Andy. It, uh... When you, when Andy, when you are doing the training wheels, risk zero point zero one, because you are at the stage of gathering information, so that you can eventually not trade the 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 way you do, the, the, what you've seen is not working for you yeah the training wheels are so that if you're going to trade the training wheels is 0 0.01 lot size if you trade 0 0.5 lot size then you're going to get to the goal quicker yeah and your drawdown is going to be deeper but you're going to get to your 10% without you knowing what you like the most. We are using 0 0.01 so that you can just gather the trades needed so that you can eventually make up a plan for yourself.